Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Dentistify. I hope you all are doing good. So today's video is basically in continuation to my previous video which was part 1 of finish lines where we discussed about the difference between margin and finish line, various features, functions and requirements of finish lines. So today we will be discussing about different types of finish lines based on location that is supragingival, equigingival and subgingival finish line. So with that I hope that the expectations are rightly set for today's video and let's just quickly go ahead and begin with the video. So now we'll talk about the different types of finish lines depending upon their location that means based on the location of finish line and also depending upon the finish line design or the finish line design configuration. So based upon the location of finish line, there are basically three types of finish lines. First is supragingival, then there is equigingival and finally the subgingival finish line. And based upon the finish line design configuration, there are different types of finish lines like knife edge finish line, chamfer finish line, shoulder and shoulder with the bevel. So in today's video, we'll be talking about different finish lines based on location. So let's start with the supragingival finish line. So supragingival finish line is basically placed above the gingival crest. Okay. And generally supragingival finish lines are mostly used in non-aesthetic areas and in low lip line cases. So what is a lip line? Lip line is basically the gingival smile line which describes the amount of vertical tooth exposure along with the adjacent upper gingival tissue when smiling naturally. Okay, so a low lip line displays 75% or even less than 75% of maxillary anterior teeth with no display of the adjacent gingival tissues as we can see here in this picture whereas high lip line it exposes almost all of the uh, clinical crowns along with the adjacent band of gingival tissues as we can clearly see in this picture. So I'll talk about the lip lines in a separate video and link for that video will be provided in the description box below. But for now, I hope that it is clear that supragingival finish lines are preferably given in low lip line cases. Okay, because the aesthetics factor will not be much of an issue because the finish line will be covered by the upper lip. But ideally, the finish lines should be placed supragingivally whenever possible. Because supragingival finish lines, they stay away from the periodontal tissues and therefore it should be the finish line of choice for optimum periodontal health. So let's talk about the advantages of supragingival finish lines. So first advantage of supragingival finish line is that the preparation of tooth and finishing of the margin is the easiest with the supragingival finish line. It is very easy to replicate or duplicate the finish line with the impressions. The impression making is less traumatic for the soft tissues when we are using supragingival finish lines. Also, the impressions can be made easily with minimal or almost no cord packing and even the impressions can be removed past the finish line without tearing. So another advantage of supragingival finish lines is that provisional restorations or the temporary restorations, they are easier to make, okay? And verification of the marginal integrity of restoration is easiest when we are going for supragingival finish lines. Another advantage of supragingival finish line is that fit and finish of the restoration and even removal of the excess cement material is the easiest. And supragingival finish lines, they are least irritating to the gingival tissues. Also, these finish lines, they can be maintained uh, very easily by the patient. Now, let's talk about the equigingival finish lines. So, equigingival finish line is the one which is placed at the level of gingival crest. Okay, and as per the literature, it is well tolerated by the periodontal tissues equigingival finish line is considered positively due to its accessible margin placement 
okay because the restorations can be finished easily in order to provide smooth and polished interface at the gingival margin which further results in almost negligible gingival inflammation so the equigingival finish line is also considered positively because of the acceptable aesthetics that it provides because the restoration margins can be aesthetically blended very easily so i hope it is clear that with equigingival finish lines we can expect accessible margin placement and acceptable aesthetics so a subgingival finish line is basically placed below the gingival crest in the gingival sulcus therefore the name subgingival finish line it is placed somewhere between the free gingival margin and alveolar crest okay and another thing is that the deeper the restoration margin is placed in the gingival sulcus greater is the inflammatory response okay therefore the subgingival finish lines are best avoided unless it is absolutely indicated so the subgingival finish line is also called as sulcular finish line or it is also called as intracrevicular finish line now let's talk about the indications for subgingival margins so subgingival placement of restoration margins is considered when restoring the teeth that are short that means short teeth cervical incisally and there is need to increase the amount or length of the tooth structure for the restoration so this is done to improve the retention form and the resistance form another indication for subgingival margin is that uh, when we want to hide the margins on a discolored tooth or even to hide the margin when more opaque restoration is placed okay so subgingival finish lines are also indicated when there is presence of caries erosion or even ab fraction which are extending subgingivally or if there is a pre existing or old restoration that extends subgingivally i have explained the difference between uh, erosion and ab fraction in one of my previous videos if you want i will give you the link in the description box below So subgingival finish line is also indicated in presence of dentinal hypersensitivity okay and subgingival finish line may also be indicated when restoring teeth that have uh, proximal contacts that need to be lengthened apically in order to avoid dark triangles so i hope that the indications for subgingival finish lines are clear for you and we'll talk about the various types of finish lines based upon their configuration or based upon the design of finish lines for example knife edge finish line chamfer shoulder or shoulder with the bevel finish lines in my next video so to summarize i would say that nowadays it is possible to place the supragingival restoration margins even in aesthetic areas okay because of the massive advancements in the adhesive dentistry or the resin cements and even with the advent of more translucent restorative materials however placement of subgingival finish lines can be considered in unavoidable clinical situations in order to fulfill the advanced aesthetic demands or due to presence of uh, the apically extending dental diseases So the type of finish line which is to be used for a particular restoration should be wisely chosen okay while striking a balance between the appearance or aesthetics of the restoration and its longevity So do like this video if you found it helpful and if you want me to make more such videos then consider subscribing to this channel press the notification bell which is next to the subscribe button so that you will get notified whenever i post a new video and also don't forget to share it with your friends and colleagues you can also drop your suggestions about the topics you want me to cover in the comment section below and i'll see you very soon in my next video till then take care